welcome back guys from the other side and like i said we're gonna hop right into it but before you guys um before we hop into it i want to tell you guys make sure you like share comment subscribe on this video um i'm gonna be putting out a lot more content i'm trying to free myself up make more time to do stuff like this more long form more podcasts so that way you get more 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 me um, this the reason you're here is for sports, my take on it, and me. So you get all three of those, and I'm trying to make sure I get more of that to you. So we want to talk about right now, the Lakers struggling without AD. There's a few things that have happened to the Los Angeles Lakers in this time period. You want to be real with it? Let's go ahead and talk about it. The Lakers are sus as hell without AD. They should be making a move. I'm hearing rumors, reading them, the way wires and all that stuff. That it's a good chance that Lakers go after Hassan Whiteside, which I think would be a perfect move because LeBron, with a big who can be functional, I think works out really well for him. Now, right now, the Lakers, I had them pretty much almost pinned in to the NBA Finals. Um, I'm not too sure if that's going to still be the case. Um, but when I look and I say, okay, Western Conference, you got to play seven games against the LA Lakers. Are you winning four of them? So I took a look, and I'm like, even with the struggles, I still think the Lakers are coming out. Now, granted, they are 5-4 and four without AD. AD will come back after the break. The Lakers aren't playing for the one seed. There's no reason to play for the one. You play to just get in, which at this point, unless they completely implode, there's no way they don't make the postseason. They would have to completely implode. They are one of the better teams in the NBA when it comes down to the record. They're only third in the Western Conference. Um, behind the other LA team, the Clippers and the Utah Jazz, who are who are be surprised to me in the NBA. Not saying that they're not a good team, but who honestly thought that if you said, "Hey, 31 games into the regular season, the Utah Jazz would be the number one seed in the Western Conference," you would say, "Oh, so means me, they'd have to be better than both LA teams, Portland and Denver." Mm-mm. I wouldn't have put them there. But they're right there now. So that shows a little bit of growth and all that kind of stuff comes with age. But Los Angeles Lakers struggling without AD is mainly because the Lakers aren't as big as they were last year. Remember last year, they would go Dwight. They could go JaVale. You could go Stents without AD and still be okay down low. This team isn't built that way. That, that's not the type of team this is. They're a smaller, more athletic version of what last year's team was. Last year's team had a lot of age, but it had a lot of grit. And that's what got them through. And honestly, that's what got them past Miami. Because the only team that had more grit, or at least as much grit, I apologize, at least as much grit as the Los Angeles Lakers was the Miami Heat. Now, looking at how things are going right now. If I said the lay, all right, so let's say we, we match it out. Let's take the eight teams that are in right now. Eight teams that are in right now. So you have the Jazz, Clippers, Lakers, Suns, Blazers, Spurs, Nuggets, Warriors. Those are your eight. If we go Lakers, Jazz, seven games, who are you taking? I'm still taking the Lakers. You go Lakers, Clippers, seven games, who are you taking? If it goes seven, maybe. But I'm taking the Lakers. Uh, Lakers, Suns, I'm taking the Lakers again. It's... It, it lines up that way every single time. I'm taking L.A. If I can put them against any other team in the Western Conference and say, okay, you got X amount of games, let's do this. That's basically what we're looking at there. Now, since we're talking NBA, there was another story that came across my, um, my little timeline here that I thought needed a little bit of attention. Carl Anthony Towns says he wants more head coach diversity. Cool. Carl Anthony Towns, if I'm not mistaken, bro, I think you made the playoffs once in your entire career. And that's no shade. But I seriously believe you only made it once. Let me take a look here. At the Minnesota Timberwolves basketball team. Here, I'm going to take a look at their uh, record. Let's just go back last... 10 years. That way I know it'll encapsulate his time there. All right. So let's see. The Minnesota Timberwolves franchise index. That's perfect. Okay. Now, let's take a good look here. This team made the playoffs once in the time he's been there. I knew I was right. I knew I'd get it right. 
Carl Anthony Towns, his teams have won 40 games one time. That was a 47 and 35 season, but he lost in the first round. And I'm just still looking here. This team historically has not been that great. Has some really good runs with Kevin Garnett. But nothing more after that. Like it, This has been really, really, really bad. They made the playoffs once since 2004. The last thing you need to be worried about, my dear friend, is the race of your head coach. You need to get a coach who knows how to play, who knows how to win with the guys you guys are getting. You need a GM that knows what he's doing. I don't care if the guy's white, black, yellow, purple, green. I don't care. Looking at what your team has done, just looking at your franchise since well before you got there, which means it isn't the coach. It, 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 it can't possibly be for a lack of talent because I'm looking at this roster now. I'm, I'm looking at this roster, the Minnesota Timberwolves roster for this year. And I'm guaranteeing that this roster is good enough to make the postseason. I'm just 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 by looking at it, I believe they're probably good enough to make the postseason. Because every year they got one of the better rosters. And you look at it, season starts. Oh, they got they got two really good players right there. That's good. Two typically two really good players, two top end players should be good enough to get you into the postseason. Well, at this point, 7-24, worst team in the NBA. A worst record, mind you. I didn't say the worst team. Well, no, about that. Probably, probably the worst team by playing it. But this is terrible, to say the least. 7-24. Carl Anthony Towns is worrying about the wrong thing. You think the Utah Jazz, who lead your division currently, are worried about the race of their head coach? Nope. Do you think they're worried about the race of their GM? Nope. All they're worried about is can this guy put the best team out as far as the GM goes, as far as the coach, can he put us in position to be successful? So here we go, guys. This is what we're looking at here. They have Anthony Edwards, one of the better young players in the NBA. Uh, Ricky Rubio, D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns. Malik Beasley. This team should be good to be a spit at least an eight by now. I mean, they can't, you can't possibly have that many high end draft picks and be looking like, oh, well, this team's good enough to make it. You can't possibly be this bad for this long. It doesn't, it doesn't equal out to anything. It, it truly doesn't. I mean, I put it like this if you take Carl Anthony Towns, I'm looking at his teams the same way a lot of people look at Anthony Davis and the New Orleans Pelicans when he was there. Every year, they struggled to make the postseason, and when they did, it was a quick out. I think he won three postseason games total while he was there. This Minnesota Timberwolves team, if they can't get it together, I'm not blaming anybody other than the star player. Because you have had a lot of talent there with you to put forth the effort to get your team into the playoffs and stay there. And not to mention, you had Jimmy Butler right there with you, and that was the year you made it. Right there with you, showing you how to win, but you didn't want him there because he was too hard on you. Well, guess what? Any player who's playing... All right, when I play, I wanted guys who we, we push each other to be better than we were. Okay, yeah, you, yeah, you're one of the more talented players in the NBA. But tell me what that's getting you outside of outside of you sitting there watching whatever cable package you, or satellite package you have come to end of May. Because that's all you're doing, sitting there watching other guys playing games becoming more important than you are. That's exactly what's happening right now. There are now players who have played in playoff games who are now looked at as better players then they actually should be. I mean, keep this in mind. You are a very forgettable star player at this point in your career. So I wouldn't worry about anything else other than being successful at what you do. 
on an individual level, you got that. But last time I checked, if your career ain't Carl Malone-esque, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, you're forgettable. And last time I checked, your career isn't on that trajectory whatsoever. Because I can list off 20 players that I would have on my roster before I get to Carl Anthony Towns. And that's simply because you are a very forgettable player when it comes all the way down to it. And that's because of a lack of team success. So I don't want to hear anything about, oh, well, I got... Um, I was 20 and 10 for X amount of seasons in a row. That's beautiful. But without any postseason success, I completely look past it. Same thing a lot of people were doing with Kevin Garnett until he got to Boston. It's just the reality of the situation. But on the back end of this last break coming up, I'm going to talk to you all about stopping your Brady hate. This is the halftime adjustment, and I'll see you all on the other side of this break. Thank <music> you.